Okay, now it's time to hear from broadcaster, presenter, mental health campaigner, and author of the Grief Survival Guide, Jeff Brazier. Jeff has experienced grief throughout his life in 2009. He supported his two sons through the devastating death of their mother, Jade Goody. He has also witnessed the anguish of his own mum when she lost both her parents and has held space for his life coaching clients who are coming to terms with loss. Welcome, Jeff. It's great to have you here with us to talk about this important topic. Yes, guys, thanks so much for having me. And it's a, a, a conversation, believe it or not, that A, we know that we really need to have any time, but especially now, uh, but also it's a conversation that I actually really enjoy, if, if that's, uh, if that's um, allowable. I, I do quite enjoy talking about the subject. No, definitely. Um, you've been very open about your own experience of grieving for Jade. What's it been like for you to share such a deeply personal and emotional experience in the public eye? Yeah, I never really had a choice, um, just because obviously Jade was uh, incredibly popular and um, people um, followed that story right up until the bitter end. And I guess yeah. what everybody always wanted beyond that was what happens next to these children. And um, so actually I felt an enormous amount of pressure, if you like, a lot of it self-imposed really to always ensure that um, that I succeeded, whatever that meant, whatever that looked like. Um, I now realised 12 years on that I put too much pressure on myself um, I, and I wish that I could have just sort of traveled back in time and told myself that everything was always going to be okay. You'd have to um, trust, I think, that you would always be able to find the solutions when and as they come up and that it's not all, it was never on the the, the, the surviving parent, if you like, um, because the kids um, do a lot of the healing and the development and the growth themselves as well. And that's something that we cannot possibly ever know at the time I mean there was such a young age four and five but as they get older and you know there's the strengths that I think you inevitably um get from having to go through something as painful as that um and as challenging and and yeah I'd, I'd honestly say like you know they, these boys um uh, uh their strengths have come through and um, and I think they've done a, a lot of a, a lot of what's required themselves as well. So it's been it's been a team effort. What else would it be? We obviously followed your story. And did you find it hard that obviously having to keep a, a positive f face for your kids and obviously going through such a traumatic situation? I can only put it into my feelings. I went through a horrific accident with my girlfriend recently. And I think the one thing was for me was to be able to be so positive in such a negative situation and have the moments when you do just break down because it's natural, it's human. And I tried to hide that. And I think the one thing that helped me was kind of being quite open with my girlfriend that I was finding it hard. And did you turn to somebody? How did you deal with that pressure? I didn't learn probably until the last couple of years that sharing vulnerability was was not just real strength um, in life generally, not just loss, but also it's really, really helpful as well. Mm. Um, the minute that you share your vulnerability and the truth, if you like, it's a relief. And I think too many people in loss try to pretend that everything's okay and that they're not hurting. And um, like you described, I was a prime candidate of someone that used positivity to just try and muddle my way through everything. And the truth is, is that if you are blocking the negative feelings or the negative effects of everything that you're going through, um, then you're going to have to block everything else as well. And it, it makes you less human to, yeah. to be like that. Sadly, it's probably the most common um coping mechanism that that we adopt when it comes to losing anybody but i'm really pleased that i woke up to it at a, at a point and started realizing that i have to be a little bit more honest here also it's difficult because your children um are, are, are really um they're protecting you so you know they know what it feels like to lose one parent um they're going to protect your your mental health in many yeah. respects so they're not going to put on you even though you're there knowing that that's your job and that you're desperate to know how they are um a lot of the time actually you're the last person that they're going to tell so to actually um you know my way of uh, I, I think being responsible in a situation i was lucky that I was in a position where i was able to afford it not everybody is um but to to make sure that the children have therapy um freddie always had it throughout bobby refused 
um, Bobby uh, has been having it the last year and a half, two years. Um, when That's it got so to good the point, hear, actually, yeah. he realised that, that that he needed to, which was a major relief for me for him to get to that point because I knew he needed to talk. Um, you know that that's um, that's that's a big positive in 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 loss. It's like right, you know, we need to be talking to someone. If we're not talking to our loved ones, then we need to be talking to a, a, a professional because um, if we're not and if we're bottling everything up like that just yes, builds yeah. and builds and can sometimes have a really catastrophic effect. It, it can be like a, a kind of coat that's shaken up, isn't it? The pressure builds, builds, and when you open it, it, it does pop. And that's why your, your book, The Grief Survival Guide, which we have got here, How to Navigate Loss and All That Comes With It. Now, you use tips and tricks that you actually use to clients and speak to clients about and the knowledge that you have, and it's all in this book. What is the biggest thing for you that's helped you get through grief? Here's the biggest thing that I can say after 12 years of it is that you are gonna make every mistake there is to make. And you know what, it's okay. And that's pretty normal, it's pretty human to do so. No one can navigate grief perfectly because of the, the uniqueness to it and obviously because of how traumatic it is so take that pressure off of yourself and just you know just trust that you'll come up with what you need to come up with it you know when you need it the thing is that what's really interesting for me is covid has obviously been a difficult time for anyone who is grieving for a loved one in your role as a coach what kind of support do you people need um, well, look, if we're keeping it relevant to, to loss, I think that anyone that's lost anybody in the last two years, 18 months, certainly, will no doubt feel like they need some recognition uh, because I think sometimes, and this must have been, you know, the case in wartime, potentially I wasn't there, so I can't say as a fact, but I would, I would imagine that when there are more losses taking place on a regular basis, that yeah. our focus is always on a, on a bigger picture. Whereas, you know, usually if someone had lost someone three, four years ago, you, you'd imagine that they would have had the time to process it um, entirely. Um, yeah. Whereas now there's, you know, all the connotations as to did we go to the funeral? Was we allowed in the hospital? Did we get to say goodbye? And recognition um, of, of, of their loss um, would, would, I think, go a long way, whether there's some sort of at the end of, all of this, there's some sort of day where where it's a national day of mourning for those that died in this yeah. particular time frame. I think that that would be something that I, I would want to see personally. Yeah. Uh, but also people always want to know if they're grieving right. If Am I doing it properly? You know, am I feeling what I'm meant to be feeling? I feel all right. Like, shouldn't I be devastated? Or I, I feel like I can't stop crying. Like, is there something wrong with me? Am I broken? It affects all of everyone these really differently, doesn't it? questions that we hear on a regular basis. I think people just need the validation and reassurance that whatever you're feeling is where you're meant to be. Like, your, your, um, your nervous system will basically dictate what you're meant to be feeling and when you're meant to be feeling it. So, you know, it might not be uh, particularly desirable at any one time and another time you might feel guilty because actually you feel pretty good and you're laughing about stuff. The truth is, wherever you are is where you're meant to be. Mm. And just know that, that, that that's the natural um, effect of grief taking place. Grief is the most complex thing mm. you'll ever experience. And unfortunately, we, we are likely at some point in our lives to experience it not once, twice, maybe, you know, several times. Um, that is what we signed up to, I guess, when we sort of arrived. But, um, but yeah, complex is is definitely the best word that you can you can apply to it. Um, it's daunting. Um, there's nobody's ever an expert on it either, because you can have someone who's who's trained in it, and um, you know they might lose someone, and all of a sudden it's like all that knowledge and experience just kind of it, it doesn't help you because it doesn't stop the pain. If we can put a support network around us and if we can be open and honest, then then I always feel that whilst it won't be perfect, you're never going to navigate for it perfectly. You will find your way.